Who had fun today when we went out there? That's the reason why we're here. Being the Amherst, it's the hardest software race in the world. Even if you have built the perfect car, made the perfect team, you still have about 25% chance of finishing. We're one and two in the race, running for the lead. Lauren caught on fire when we were racing head to head. He had passed us in the desert, and as soon as he passed us, we could smell it, but we weren't sure what we were smelling yet. And so we stayed behind him enough that we could make sure that he was okay. Boom, he starts engulfed in flames, jumps out of the car, and we're pulled over making sure Lauren's okay because there's no way that you're gonna just drive by your brother on fire, right? It's super cool to see the, the KOA rookie class out here. They all seem to be sponging off of it and really absorbing what all of us vets have been, been doing out here for a lot of years. So there's a lot to learn. I wish I had it when I was jumping into this 15 years ago. There's, there's definitely some shortcuts that we're giving these guys. Hey, I'm Dave Cole and uh, welcome to the ranch out here in Johnson Valley and thank you for coming for our first uh, ever rookie program. The rookie program itself was something that wasn't around when we first initially discussed doing this. I almost sold the car I just bought and heard about this and carring for sale tomorrow. This is, this is the thing. Chasing the dream of uh, hopefully being a future king. This is like grown man Disneyland. And Dave just keeps peeling back the layers. I made the mistake of getting in a four-seater Can-Am. We went about 1,050 miles an hour down the airstrip. We did three donuts, pour off across the desert. I thought my life was going to end. The man knows what he's doing. Now that I'm here and I'm seeing it, I'm mind blown. I think I learned more in one hour here than I would have an entire year trying to research it by myself. It's just been that one up that a lot of people aren't having that opportunity to get first time around. And it's just been such a value to us to be able to have so much information at the tip of our fingers and all we have to do is ask. You know, your co-driver gets out of the car and he's winching and all these things that come up. You gotta be calm enough to remember it's just a fun race. It's not worth putting somebody in harm's way. And I feel that way about the crew guys and the pits, the people that you see on the race course. I don't know every rule and I certainly haven't written all the rule books. I wanna share these experiences that we've learned so that hopefully you don't have to make the same mistakes. If you get in a car, put your seatbelts on. A person that was well into our sport competitive wise back in rock crawling, went to load their car up on the trailer, didn't put their seatbelts on, shot up the trailer through the back of their cab, fucked his life up. When you guys get in your car, if you have a problem out there, get completely geared up again before you go. All that, like the cool romantic shit of my co-driver's putting his belts on while I'm driving 90 miles an hour, there's literally nothing here that important for anyone to do. This was meant to be that safety pitch. Like that, all we cared about at the start of this was let's not get you guys hurt. And it's turned into let's get, let you guys succeed. And quite honestly, the engagement this weekend got us to think outside the box about how we can really make a transformational difference. Safety is like one part of it, but I swear comfort is, it sounds so ridiculous. This is the most hardcore race. You have to be super badass. But if you are not comfortable in that car, it's gonna be an awful day, and it will take away from your driving performance. There's a lot of talk on one of the forms for Ultra Four, the hard seat versus the suspension seat and broken backs. Well, what's up with that, you know? When you hit the chassis on the rocks in a hard seat, it's like you just hit the rock with your ass. Like, it's violent. These little discussions are like the best part of what's been racing for the last 18 years out here. You can decide to do whatever you want, the standpoint of like which one's better, I think it's yet to be decided. I run a UPR three inch thick seat foam on the bottom with a Sparco seat. Nine or 10 hours in one of these things is tough. Don't make it tougher by setting it up wrong. Make sure your seat is in the right spot and that you, you, know, you like where you sit in the car. Uh, you're not banging your head off the roof the whole time because it'll drive you crazy throughout the day pay attention to how your belts are mounted in the car because it'll change how you feel throughout the day if you're not getting that that feeling of being compressed down all the time this is a grueling race as we learn more you'll figure things out it's a constant evolution of everything that we've done also just remember that like everything that you do in your race car out here is kind of a reflection of everybody else so don't be just ripping through people's pits at night you know, you just gotta be respectful for everybody else that's out here.
My first race experience, you know, I made it, I don't know, maybe a total of 10 miles. My car was broken half. We had broken through the seats. We were sitting on the exhaust and there was flames coming up inside the cab. The guys are running out with fire extinguishers, so then I neutral dropped it and blew the transmission in half right in the pit. But was absolutely hooked, and I, I knew it was something that, that I could wrap my head around and be good at and be passionate about. It gave me something to really focus on. Came back out in, uh, in 2010 for, for King of the Hammers and came out and won the whole race. At the end of that year, I sold that race truck because now I have all these partners who are trying to throw parts at me. 2011 was, was the year that I really learned that free parts are never free. And you get a bunch of these companies who are out there trying to give you their prototype test parts that they want validated at King of the Hammers. And it took me out of every single race in 2011. One of those free parts took me out of every single race. And that's one of the things I want you to take away from here is is really making sure that your partnerships are a two-way street, that, that it works good for both of you, you know, that you're providing them a good investment as well as they're providing you what you need. If, if you're gonna halfway do it, you're wasting your time. If you're gonna halfway do your marketing program, you're wasting your time. If you don't wanna put together a social media program, you're wasting your time because that's what these partners are looking for and it's what they expect and it's what the guy who's next to you is doing and they're gonna choose you over them. Content generation and social media specialists is a huge part of your career now. I promise you, it took me a long time to break down my walls and, and understand the value in it. But everything about my racing career has doubled or tripled since I've put the focus and the time and the effort into it. You know, every time Monster Energy tags me in something dumb that I'm doing off-road, I gain a thousand followers. And that's how partnerships work. And, and if I hadn't have had that content created there, at that event and been able to give it to Monster for them to be able to post it, then I don't gain those thousand followers. Monster doesn't have anything to post and the relationship just gets stale. So you don't have to have a huge social following. I don't have millions of followers. With social media, with content creation, with measurable metrics that are out there now, when they give you X amount of dollars, they wanna know what they're gonna get back for it and you need to be able to tell them. In that video, of jumping off the cliff. It got shared and went so far out there and grabbed by so many people. They're valuing that video at close to a million dollars. How do you prioritize tuning in like the rocks versus the desert? Everybody has a different opinion. I'm willing to pedal for the big stuff because I'm gonna get 10% big stuff and I'm gonna get 99% little crap. I wanna, I wanna go 45 when you're going 35 to tune anything, there's a saying that goes right along with me, it's called, it's never rebound. I worked on Rob McEachern's truck and it's the softest, most comfortable thing you've ever ridden in. And Jason Voss drives it sometimes and hates it. Fast as hell in it, but hates it. And then they switch and drive each other's truck and Rob hates it. But it's just driver preference. The thousand this year as you're watching the video, somebody will smash, buck, crash, and everybody will say, oh, he needed more rebound, but you watch the tire. Trucks off the ground and the tire is still coming out. If it was rebound, it would have to push away. There's so much blamed on rebound in the world that is not rebound. If we took all the damping out, used a winch to suck the car down from the ground and then cut the winch line, the car wouldn't clear the ground. It's not enough spring energy. And even a dead cat will bounce if you throw it hard enough. <laughs> I was down at the bottom of the, of the canyon on aftershock, coming up to the rocks and Jason Shear came up behind me, got stuck in a spot with no reverse. And rather than just sit there and watch him, we pulled my winch cable out, I pulled him back, I helped get him lined up, lined back up, and he took off. What goes around comes around. You guys gotta remember that. You break your steering rack on your Can-Am, right? And Martin's coming behind, and his, his race is out, but you guys are friends. You guys built a relationship here because of this weekend, right? When Martin rolls through the pits, you put your steering box on Martin's car, his, his co-driver carries it for five miles, it saves you two and a half hours. By the time Martin gets to you, you've already pulled your box, you've lost 15 minutes. Martin off here this week, and that 15 minute fix is the end of your race. Does that make sense? Having a rookie program, I think it's very important for the community as a whole, getting all first-time King of the Hammers competitors together. 
being racers and off-road enthusiasts, I already feel like they're gonna be longtime friends and racing families. As long as I've been in the desert, camaraderie and the friendship that you develop from everyone, everyone's willing to help each other. Even, I mean, on the track, you're enemies, right? But you'll, you're never gonna go to a race without someone's support and help. Incredible what these machines can do, you know, it only pushes me further to develop and, you know, work harder to have something like this for myself. Experience like this, you know, once in a lifetime, who else is gonna have this? And we're on Fisher Mountain in Johnson Valley. It's a pretty beautiful place. Uh, Dave had a nice idea today. We cruised out to Fisher Mountain, check out the scenery, show us some of the trails, see what we're expecting for this year of the race. I'm just pumped to be here. You know, it's been a long time coming, and I, I think we're going to have a lot of fun. These guys that you're around, some of them are going to be around with you your whole racing career, if you call it. You're going to see the same faces, and you better have friends because if you don't, they can make a race, a really long race for you. I would like to thank everybody here for uh, staying with me and uh, so far not harassing me too bad for not being prepared. A little boulder was rolled out into the road, couldn't see it, and uh, just caught it just right, pinched the sidewall and popped my tire. And a uh, lesson to everybody is to come prepared with the proper tools to change your tire. It doesn't matter if you're just going out for a short little putt, you still need to come prepared because anything like this can happen. It doesn't matter you know, what class you're racing. Everybody's there in the same boat as you are. You've never actually raced King of the Hammers before. The rookie weekend kind of felt like cheating. I changed my whole design of the car, redid the whole program, made connections I wouldn't have made. People reached out to me through the rookie program, offering their experience, their parts, their help in the pits. It's, it, the advantage of, of this program is unbelievably huge. Through the rookie program, we got to meet you know 30 plus guys. We've created some super great bonds with stand-up guys. Martin Duffy, we're going to help him pit. He's going to help us pit. Jake Godfrey, Zach Savage, Russell Raven, and Jeff Watson. We're going to team up and make it happen. I think Dave has been a, a wealth of knowledge for us. You know, giving us a rundown of what all what all happens on race week, and uh, I think uh, we still have a lot to learn. Obviously, between now and then, but uh, we're on the right track. You know, with this program, they've really helped us steer us in the right direction, so we're successful on race day. I went to the rookie weekend trying to figure out is this the right path. The partnerships, the connections, the relationship in this whole community, I've noticed that the knowledge everybody shares is more valuable than the actual race itself.